Okay, this is going to be uh, Word, Module 4, the textbook project. So what I'm going to do is work off two monitors. So if you have a question, please let me know and I'll do my ultimate best. Uh, it talks about character spacing and kerning and that's just obviously spacing between different characters and you'll see that as well. So the very first thing it tells me to do is open up the WD4-1. It'll have your name on it as well and save it under perspective. So make sure you do not delete your name. So I'm going to underscore, get rid of the one, underscore, I think I lost my name. And that looks good. Remember, if you go to submit it and it tells you the wrong name, you can just rename it. So I'm going to select the heading over here and I'm going to choose 48. Actually, I chose 24. Now, if you have a Mac and you don't get this or you aren't able to get font, if you right click on however, um, you right click, you'll see font here and you can get it from there as well as paragraph to do tabs and a whole bunch of other things that are a little bit more challenging to do. So bear that in mind. Um, so we changed it in and we're going to click the font launcher in here. So I'm going to click font from here and I'm going to click on small caps. The way small caps works is if it's a lowercase letter, It'll make it not a full size cap. I think that really looks nice. I like that. Um, and then in the advanced tab, it tells us to change the scale to 80% and then expand it to one point. So that makes it a look a little bit taller. I know it kind of sounds crazy that you're condensing and then expanding, but one is the actual size and one is the distance between the letter so we put a little bit in between each letter there so that takes care of that we've taken care of five six and now it wants me to change this to 24 point which I've just done Making sure I didn't miss any colors. We've done that in the font group. Double click the format. All right. So I'm going to double click the format painter. And that's going to allow me to copy this format to other areas where they're having to do the same thing. So we're going to do development timeline and project budget it. Now I need to get out of it. So I'll just click the format painter one time. I'm hitting control home and I'm good over here. So that takes care of pretty much everything in here. So I'm now on 4.2 working with indents. Indents allow you to move a paragraph in either the first line, all of it, or everything but the first line. So I'm going to click anywhere in the first paragraph. You do not need to select a paragraph. And here is an indent. So notice that it put a half inch indent in here. It's a left indent. To get rid of it, you can just do the unindent. So this will make it bigger. This will bring it back to normal. So that takes care of this. Um, we're going to scroll down at development timeline heading, which is right here. It needs to be at the top of your window. And then it wants me to select the 11 lines and put bullets in there. So not, not beginning this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm just going to click on bullets. If I wanted to do a check mark or something different, I can click here and use those as well. But it tells us to just use the bullets, the black round bullet. So we have that done. Um, now we're going to click a bullet. So I have this thing selected. I'm just going to click on any bullet. Doesn't matter if I click in the middle, or on top. So now I'm going to be able to work on the bullets. And I'm going to make it. Blue accent one, and not sure if it wants it both. So we're just going to change it to blue accent one. So 
here should be blue accent one. And so we change the bullets and to nothing else. If I wanted to make it bold, I can make it bold. If I wanted to make it italic, I can make it italic. So I can do that just by the bullets. So all I have to do is select one over there. Uh, place the insertion point in preliminary budget and decrease the indent. So, so what I need to do is or rather increase it. So there's two ways to do it. I can click here or I can put it in the very beginning and hit tab. But you have to be at the very beginning. You can't be here and do the, the tab. Otherwise, it will just put a tab in there for you. So then place the insertion point in marketing approval and do it three times. So I'm putting it in here. I'm going to do one, two, and three, but that's too far. So they want us to go back one time. They really wanted to just show you what's going on, uh, what happens when you hit the forward and the increase and the decrease in here. And they call that uh, demoting and promoting in here. So now it wants me to make the changes in here so I need to make the executive the same as marketing so I'm going to hit this twice then we need reservations need to be one time just the same as preliminary um, design is good then we have marketing that needs to be just one time, this needs to be two. And these two need to be one. So I'm going to select them both and do them both at the same time. And this is a good time to save it. And then it talks about the multi-level book. You'll see that, or list rather, you'll see that a lot when you're doing outlining with numbers. So now we're going to customize the status bar and insert a section break and we're going to do a little bit about headers and footers now if you go down it's hard to see in here but if you see i have i don't know, see if i can move this up no i can't you'll see it says section over here so it's already there but to get it i'm all you have to do is right click on the bar and make sure that section is there so we're going to right click in the status bar we've done that in here we've got the show high done um Place the insertion point in the black paragraph above projected budget, which is right here. And it wants us to go to layout tab and breaks and put in next page. Now, you would think to insert a section break, you would go to insert, but no, it's not there. Don't confuse section break with a page break. So I'm going to go to layout and breaks. And I'm going to choose a next page. As soon as this will let me. Do it in here. There we go. Um, we're going to do a next page. Do not confuse this and this. They're totally different. One creates a next page. The other one, this this one here, is going to create a next page and a section in here. So you can see end of section, next break in there. So we're good here. That allows you to format things differently. So we have that down. Click the insert tab and page number. So I should be on. The top of page two so i'm going to go to the insert tab i'm going to go to in the header and footer group i'm going to choose page number and i'm going to choose bottom of page and plane three so i'm probably in let me see where i need to be in there point to bottom of page all right so bottom of page is good it'll automatically put it in the footer so that takes care of this, plane number three, we've done that. So now I'm going to select the, it and I'm going to put in a V. Now notice nothing happened. And nothing happened because it's not selected, it just looks like it did. This gray area over here just means that it is an, a field. So I'm going to select it there, and yeah, I know the paragraph is marked as there, but nothing you can do about that. So now we have a bold page number, and we're going to change the font to blue, uh, the same color as the last one. So that looks good. Um, and then they give you a little bit of explanation about um, how you can lay out your document in there. So you can look at that at your leisure. So now we're going to talk about managing 
um, headers and footers in property controls a lot easier than it really says. Now, because we're in the footer, I want to go to the header. Now, I'm going to talk about in the future link to previous. And that's very important that you understand that. We're not going to do it now. I'll do a little bit of a section on headers and footers. So I'm going to click on go to header. And it wants me to go to quick parts and document property. So quick parts. Now, you can do a lot of stuff from document info, but let's go to quick parts, document property, and then title. So that allows me to put in a title. So I've got advertising, campaign, prospectus in there. Um, so that's going to be added to the header. I'm just going to click somewhere else. And let's see what else we need to do. Uh, so it wants me to change it to integral. So I'm going to click on header and here is integral here. So now you can see that kind of makes a little table here where you can put something in here and then the second part of it as well. Uh, so we've done that. Scroll down in here. Um, then scroll down to where you can see both pages at the same time. So you can see we have the bottom of page one's got the one and the top of page two has the um, has the header here. You also have the header on top. So again, we'll talk about that if you don't want that on the title page. Very easy to fix that. We've done number three. And number four is just close header and footer. And then we save our changes. So you can see um, all kinds of stuff uh, about the header and footer in the gallery. It gives you an explanation about that. So we're going to modify a table. So we're going to go to the View tab, Page Width, which is what I normally work out. Page Width, so it didn't change there. So we want to go to, until the table is a document, is at the very top, which it is. I'll leave it here. Uh, and then I'm going to click on Taxes. Tops right here. And then we're going to go to Table Layout. And let's see, it wants me to delete it. So if I go to Table Layout, I can click on Delete in here. How However, I'm not a big fan of that because you can accidentally delete the table by clicking on it. What I normally do is if I want to delete a row, I'll go to the side here and I'll just click on cut. If you prefer not to do that, you can actually right click in any cell and choose delete rows. You can select it in there. If you don't have the row selected, you could right click and choose delete cells and then it will ask you what you want to do whether you want to do the entire row in here so i'm going to choose entire row so there's i think four different ways to do the same thing i would like to do the cut right there um so we've done that and uh, now we're going to move the vertical top pointer so you can see that it's got a little down arrow I'm going to select the cell, the entire column. Notice we have a delete. Um, I, again, don't like using that delete because you could delete something you don't actually notice. It's got delete table. We don't want a delete table. I'm just going to choose cut. And that way I know that I don't have to worry about accidentally deleting the whole table. Although, yes, you can do um, undo. So we've taken care of this. Uh, move the pointer to the left edge of the table between. New York Daily News and New York Post. So here is the left of the table. Notice the little plus sign. That's a shortcut to insert a row. And then we're going to type in the first column sign. And subway cars. 100 panels. Comma two weeks. And then 18,000 tells me to save my changes, which I will. And then um, there's a bunch of copying and moving rows, which is pretty easy to do. 
uh, just straightforward. I usually just click copy and paste or cut and paste to move them. So now we're going to modify the rows and columns. So we're going to move the pointer over the border between format and venue, which is right here. Notice that it is a crosshair when you get it on right. And it wants me to drag it to the half inch mark. So you can see it's right about there. Sometimes a little hard to tell. So you can see um, the width here is a little bit more than a half. So if you have a hard time, you can change it that way. So that is actually the way I normally do it. So now move the pointer over the venue column and double click. So here is, so what this is going to do is going to make everything auto fit to the largest one. So I notice that it got smaller there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the add type. But this time it will get bigger. So you can see how it all fit. Now this did not get bigger because then this, the cost column would not be able to fit on the page. So it has to make sure everything gets stabilized by not deleting it or not by putting it somewhere that you can't print it. So let's go to the next one, number four. Position the over the table and hit the crosshairs. That selects the table. And then we're going to choose distribute rows. What that will do is make all the rows the same height. So you can see this is bigger than the other ones. So distributing rows is, if you can't find it, just look for the little icon here. It's in the cell size. So now you can see everything is the same height. Okay, click in the add type column, and we're going to change the width box to 3.5. So you can click anywhere you want, and we'll change this to 3.5. Then we're going to select button, and we're going to click the align left. So I want to... Okay, I want to select the entire table in here, and then this is the align center left. This would align everything center center, so this is going to align it to the left, but the vertical alignment is going to be in the middle. So that looks kind of nice. And then it gives you an example of how to do the advanced ones in here. All right. Sorting a table really very easy. So I'm going to, let's see where we need to do. We need to place the import search point anywhere. So we're going to actually format by or sort by the format. So let's just click anywhere in here. doesn't matter. And I'm going to click on the sort. Now it tells me, um, it automatically assumes I want to sort by the very first column. Notice that this is Text. Now, I've done this before, so let me um, remind you that whatever you do is going to be the same the next time you open it up. So, just bear that in mind. So, what we want to do here is we want to click the header row um, in here. So, we have different columns in here. So, let's go and do um, click by cost. And... Uh, for some reason, it's not allowing me to click the, um, my table has header rows. I'm not really sure. So let me, uh, it might be because I selected it. So let's try this again. And there we go. All right. So let me click on header row. And we're going to do descending. Cost is going to be descending. So now when I click on the arrow here, I see that I have the headers in there, not column one, column two. So now everything is formatted and sorted by the format, which is S is to D, and this is high to low. So we've done all that. We've done the sorting, and now it wants me to deselect the table, which I've done.
and you can actually sort lists as well. I'm not going to do this one because they're different, but you can, uh, if you have a list, they're all the same. It's very easy to sort in here. So let me move on to splitting and merging. I am tell you right now, I am not a big fan of merging cells because then when you try to do something, it makes it a little bit more challenging, but we're going to do it this way. So we're going to select the two signs over here and I'm going to right click and choose merge cells. But now I have two signs, so I need to just get rid of one. Do the same thing with print. And get rid of this print. And same thing with digital. But this time we'll have to get rid of two digitals. So that looks nice there. So we've done the print cells. We've done the digital cells. Click in the New York Times cell and click insert below so i'm going to click in here and then i'm going to go uh, to layout and i'm going to click on insert below other ways that you can do it and notice that it did a whole new row but nothing was merged in here if i wanted to add one here you can do that as well but right now we don't need to worry that in other words if i wanted to add one between the posts and the New York Times, I can do that. So that, that's not a problem. Um, so we're going to select to drag the first three cells of the new last row. And we're going to merge those cells. So again, I can click on it, the merge cells up top here, or I, I prefer to right click. Now what we need to do is we're going to split cells in here. So let me go and in the first cell, the first row, let me see if I need to type anything yet. Nope. So I'm going to right click and choose split. And we're going to do one column in three rows. And we're going to do the same thing for the next one. So we'll do the same thing here. I'm going to right click and where we want one and three. All right. So now we're good. So now we have to type in some things and we're going to actually do a formula. So consider this to be A, B, C, D, and then this would be one, two, three, four, kind of like a uh, Microsoft Excel chart. All right, in the first blank cell, type column one. So we have it over here. So we're going to type in total cost. We're going to hit the tab key. Now, if I click on a formula, it gives me a sum above. So it's going to sum all these things up. I'm going to click on OK and boom. Then uh, we're going to click on OK, uh, and I'm missing a step somewhere. Oh, OK. So I need to change this to 95. Now notice that when I hit somewhere else, nothing gets updated. So to update it, just right click on this and choose update field. That's the difference between Excel and Word is in the table. If you're doing formulas, you have to update them manually. So that takes care of this. Then we're going to type in budgeted and difference. The budgeted is 125. And then we're going to do formula here, which will automatically fill in some above. So what we need to do is equals. We're going to type in equals. And you'll get flashbacks when you go into Word. B9 minus B10. So that's 
So in this particular case, this is A and this is B. So once we do it, it's going to subtract this from this. And apparently I did not do a very good job, so let's try this again. And equals B9 minus B10. Click on OK and see what happens. All right, so we're not doing well. Try, they say, the third time's a charm. All right, we finally got it. Third time is a charm. Uh, it does make you actually type stuff in, and then it gives you the formulas in here. 